show you how to turn a bowl using the 4040 uh, grind bowl gouge. Um, so the first thing I, after I cut the blank is that I want to put it between centers and I mark my center point here. Um, what's most important is that this line, this plane I guess is um, straight. Doesn't so much matter what's happening behind it. So I bring it between centers and I tighten it up and then I can just check and make sure you know it's not too far off. I'm going to adjust it a little bit. And then to make sure it's tight I just wiggle it around a little bit and keep tightening. So the first step is I'm going to plane the face to make sure it's even and then I'm going to cut a recess and flip it over. So I want to have my tool rest so that I'm cutting it center. So it's going to be just below the live center and my tool is going to be cutting like this. So I'm at center with my the tip of my tool, the blade that's cutting, um, even though my tool rest is slightly below. So I'm going to start with it on slow, just in case something happens and it falls off. And I'm going to turn it up. I'm going to put my left hand on the bowl gouge. My right hand's going to hold the tool. I'm going to press it up against my body and just without moving my arms, just moving my body back and forth, and I'm removing the high spots. I don't need to push into the wood, just taking out the uneven parts. a recess. I'm going to take the same bowl gouge and with it half open, I'm just going to do two scoops in. Count that as one. so that it's at the right angle. I'm going to point this point of the bedan into the corner of this cut I've just created and I'm going to push down and at an angle. So the recess should be undercut just slightly. Um, if your jaws are thicker than the width of your bedan, you're going to want to even this up, otherwise they're not going to be able to get in here. So now I'm ready to flip it over and start rounding. Now I'm going to round the blank. Um, I cut this one a little bit 
I cut the corners off, but it's certainly not round. So I just want to make sure it doesn't hit the tool rest. And we're good. I've got it secured um, with a chuck in the recess. And then I pulled up the tailstock just as an extra safety measure, um, even though this should keep it on pretty well. So I like to put my thumb in the flute and wrap my fingers around the gouge. That kind of helps me pull it down without rotating it. Um, I'm gonna move the tool rest in a little bit. So I've got the flute half open. I've got the handle almost perpendicular to the lathe bed. I'm going to be pulling down with my thumb and my finger, and I'm going to be moving it with my body. And uh, I guess moving it with my body, pushing it um, in that direction. face off. It's the same cut I used at the beginning, the, the planing cut. corners I'm going to hold the flute half open and I'm just going to push straight. The tool is going to travel in the direction of the bevel so if I hold it straight the bevel is pointing this way so the tool is naturally going to travel out. start to shape the bowl. I take my tool rest and I put it at an angle to the bottom curve. Just make sure it clears. I'm going to start my tool way over here. I'm going to cut into the wood and then I'm going to travel along with it this way. Now my left foot needs to be, if I'm going to make it all the way to the end, my left foot needs to be in the right place. Um, I don't know if we're there yet, but I'm going to dig into the wood and slowly bring it across.
Now you might notice I'm about halfway through the curve and I'm still about parallel with the lathe bed. One mistake I see people do a lot is they start here and then they swing and then they end up with kind of an odd shaped pull. So it's very slow, just come across, slightly swinging the handle and then when you're at about halfway, you should be right around here and then you're gonna then bring it, you know, swing it, um, swing it from half open toward closed while you swing the handle toward your body. So I want to still be able to um, use my tool rest in that cut, but I also want to support myself in the end because I'm going to have quite a bit of overhang and that's when this tool starts to chatter. When I first started doing this, I would um, hold my breath because I thought, you know, any movement was going to make a movement in the wood. But if you pull down gently, you can breathe all you want and the tool's not going to move. shaped you can see there is no torn grain there are some tool marks there's some marks this is wet wood so it looks like you know just some of the moisture is coming through in different ways um, these lines are super easy to get rid of um, way easier than torn grain I could show you um, sharpen it on both ends so it becomes a negative break scraper that way it's not going to catch I'm going to sharpen a fur on it Burr is just a little bit of metal that stays, makes a little bit of a bump on the end of the tool. It actually acts as a abrasive, not a cut. So I'm just gonna, you know, basically sand the outside of it with this tool. So I run the lathe fast and then I constantly keep moving my tool. Sometimes you can just put your fingers on it. of the tool marks um, again we can do this again at the end um, this is going to be rough turned anyway because it's wet wood um, so I'm going to be doing some final cuts after this dries but now I've got to cut the tenon so I can flip the bowl around and hollow it I'm going to take my bowl gouge it's going to be closed I'm going to push well I guess it's going to be half open I'm going to push it in and then close it at the end needs to be undercut slightly and I like to keep it rounded because if it's just flat here these pieces are more likely to snap off um, and I've got a nice shoulder so I'm going to make this a little bit bigger
point I'm going to bring my tails back up just to make sure it's seated as tightly as possible. I can't really push evenly um, with as much force as this can. So I'm just pushing the bowl back and then I'm tightening it. So I'm just going to plane this. It's just a little bit uneven. And then I'm going to start hollowing. I'm going to do a B cut. So the tools up looks like a B. Sometimes I slightly close it, but I'm basically just going to be pushing in to create a hole so then I can start, I have space to start hollowing. So I'm going to put my thumb on the tool rest to prevent skidding. I'm going to wrap my fingers around the tool, pull down gently. I'm going to start in the middle. I'm just going to push in. Here's the skinny. That's if I don't have my thumb. So I just place my thumb in this stopper. Into the wood. And then as I turn, I'm going to open my tool. So it's closed, goes in, and then open. Once I get the bite, I don't need my thumb here anymore because it's not going to skin. So I'm going to pull my fingers back and pull down gently. I want my fingers out of the way because if this does happen to go past center, it's going to come flip back over and likely hit me in the hand. So I've got the bite. I'm going to slide my fingers back. You don't need the left hand. You don't need the left hand. It's just a stop and a sort of wobble. But you're not pushing with your left hand. You're doing it all through. ridges in so when I go to hollow it more I don't skin um, and I'm leaving you can't really see it here but I can see it when it's turning there's little ridges in the wood and that's from the heel of the tool bumping into it and getting in my way so I'm just going to grind this down. The way I know how to stop I'm, for this part here I'm going to use a bottom bowl gouge so I bring it through and when my tool starts to hit the rim of the bowl that's about as far as I want to go so this will be the job of the bottom bowl gouge. So this is the bottom bowl gouge. I sharpen it at 60 degrees. I'm going to bring my tool rest down a little bit. And what I see a lot of people do is they just jam this into the wood and it catches. Um, I have no idea where this blade is going to hit the wood, so I'm going to start by putting hitting the heel of the um, gouge on the wood. That's not going to catch or anything. And then I'm going to pull the handle, push the handle forward to find the cut. So I'm going to start here, and then I'm going to slowly open. As I bring the handle around, I'm going to keep my hand pushing down. Uh, don't hook your thumb, don't hold on. If you do any of these things, you're just going to naturally be pushing it with your left hand. All you want to do is hold this onto the tool rest, and all the movement's going to come from your right hand.
looks pretty good. No, no torn grain, few tool marks. It'll be easy to get out. Um, I'm gonna check for even thickness. It's a lot thicker here than it is here. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the bowl gouge. paper bag um, and leave it for a couple of weeks and then I'll check the moisture on it. Um, I don't want to turn it a second time until my moisture meter reads uh, 10 or under. 